Radio kicking off here. And welcome to the Balance of Life, those who are tuning in via our radio broadcast. Today is Thursday, September the 9th, 2020, and I'm so excited for what we're about to share with you on today. We are in the final, final of this three-day revival. I heard in my spirit on yesterday uh, that it was a revival, and what we're going to share with you today is the ending portion of uh, this revival. We're going to just hone in on Uh, continuing to talk about uh, the authority to represent and over the past three days uh, we have covered so much we have covered so much in this series and and so I'm so very excited Uh, today what we're going to cover is even more let me tell you we're going to cover uh, how uh, the authority to represent allow us uh, it's it could be individual it's definitely personal and then it is specific and so what we've been sharing with you is how your experiences allows you to uh, use it as your testimony uh, because it's something that you have experienced and so that's what makes it actually personal this is something that you have actually experienced you have uh, been delivered you have been healed in certain areas and truly uh, through that healing through that deliverance through that breakthrough you can now use it as a testimony that's right use it as a testimony unto the glory of God and 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 it is your effective witness so we're also going to cover uh, how God uses various ways and means to issue the call. Every, when, whenever we receive the call, uh, our experience is not necessarily going to be like anybody else's, okay? And something that I want to share with you today, I'm back in this book on prayer, and I thank God for the reading material that we come across And uh, I am actually going to go out today and hopefully, listen, I love to come across reading material, something that is going to help us uh, maneuver and learn more about the call that's on our lives. Listen to this. In 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. This is one of my favorite areas of scripture, let me tell you. The weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God, and we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Now that is a different translation. But you get to see me actually work today (laughs) it's my Friday can you tell all right let's look at the King James version of 2nd Corinthians in 10 and it reads as follows 2nd Corinthians in 10 It says, and this is starting at verse 4, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now when we line this up with our authority to represent, the work must first begin in us. The work first begins in us, and and so we have submitted ourselves, and we have clean hands and a pure heart, and we have asked for forgiveness of some things that we have done, and, and we know by our faith and by our trust that God is that he has forgiven us. Now, when we are sent out on assignments, it is for a purpose. Once again, it is pertaining to the condition of the people. 
it is also pertaining to uh, the need uh, of what's going on the atmos in the atmosphere, what strongholds need to be broken and destroyed. All of these things play a part in what God wants to do, okay? So, when you go, you have been given the authority to deal with what's going on in that atmosphere. You have been given the authority. So if you're working with a team, and I highly recommend that when you go on assignments that you are with the team, that you do have a prayer team, someone interceding uh, for you. Uh, we are to pray for ministers that they get opportunities to go out to minister and then we're supposed to pray that the way is clear that there are no hindrances and, and no stagnations so that the will of God can be done in that area and so uh, let me get to this because there is a scripture and I'm gonna have to look it up it talks about Jesus um, and about the where um, he was only allowed to do so many uh, miracles or things in a certain area um, because of lack of belief and, and they really did not believe and so in that authority so Jesus he did up to a certain um, area of miracles in this area let me see. Christ delivered. Hmm. I'm going to have to get back. Let me see. It's in this book. Um, and I want to get directly to it simply because when we go in an area, if the faith is not there, first of all, to believe, that kind of hinders the work. It really does. But when you go out on an assignment, uh, you have instructions for the Holy Spirit, from the Holy Spirit. And it's it, it could be deliverance of certain things, uh, drug addictions, alcohol. Um, it could be for reconciliation to someone uh, to come back uh, into a right relationship with Christ. And so we should always always take into an account I am going to uh, do a work for the Lord I'm still looking for this um, I'm still looking for this um, for the scripture text because I want to definitely dive into it uh, and, and it was in the area of his hometown so let's take a look at uh, Mark um, Matthews 1358 let's take a look at that Matthews 1358 all right and I want to look at you know there are all these translations and I have no problem with that but I like to get specific. All right. And let's start at the ver first verse. It says, The same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow, and when he sowed, some seeds fell on good ground. When we go, uh, we are definitely um, we're definitely going to sow on good ground. I want to get down to a certain area. Let's go down to 15. It says, for this people's heart is wax gross. Um, they came, some of them came because of they heard of the miracles and they wanted to um, exemplify that. But. They really didn't have any faith. They were just there to be there. Mark 6 and 5 really zones in on it. Where it says. 
And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he and he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went around teaching the villages. So it was that it wasn't that he could not perform or do. It was because of their lack of faith. And so in that instance, he was sent to do a work, but because of their lack of faith in the area, he was limited we're going to experience that sometimes it has nothing to do with you as long as you are obedient to the will of god and that you are well equipped in your whole armor to go and do what god has called you to do that is first and foremost make sure that you are doing the will of god follow his instructions make sure that you are prayed up and that you are consecrated to go and do this assignment so the word call comes from the greek word kalis a forensic item or term meaning to summon to court with the idea of giving an account the word does not emphasize a call to service but a call to accountability so let's take a look at first corinthians 9 16. the uh, call to accountability goes hand in hand with the authority to represent we are held accountable on how we represent the kingdom of heaven during this particular series remember we have been talking about um, making sure that we are clothed in our whole armor the spiritual armor which is found over in ephesians the sixth chapter uh, making sure that we have clean hands and a pure heart no hidden agenda uh, and 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 no schisms no isms have clean hands and a pure heart and of course make sure that you are being led to go in these areas where you are going whenever you are asked to uh, speak or even run a revival I don't uh, hear that so often now, but yes, revivals are still needed. Uh, but whenever you receive an invitation uh, to go and minister the word, interact with the Holy Spirit. Find out, is, is this where he is leading you to? We, we took a look at Paul. Paul desired to go into an area. Yes, there was need in that area, but the Holy Spirit forbade him to go in that area. And so he was not permitted to go. That was not his territory and it happened on another occasion that wasn't his territory god had need of him elsewhere and we read and share with you the miracles that transpired in that particular area and so first corinthians 9 and 6 says for it is written in the law of moses thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn doeth god take for oxen so let's read even further let's go over to 16 it says for though i preach the gospel i have nothing to glory of uh, for necessity is laid upon me yea woe is unto me if i preach not the gospel so this is the accountability when we are sent here is the accountability and i want you to catch this in the spirit even when you arrive at your destination do not deter from your assignment make sure that you have precise instructions some of the instructions that you're going to receive you won't receive them until you get to your destination all you know is yes god has a need for you to go into a certain area and you go in that area and stay in the presence of the lord and he's going to release more instructions unto you for what is needed uh in that area the word that you've been studying um the holy spirit will reveal unto you certain aspects of this ministry assignment but do not deter even when you arrive do not be pulled and shifted from your assignment move according to the holy spirit this is imperative 
so that deliverance can take place healing can take place restoration the unbeliever can now become the believer so that god's will can be done in that area remember god will send his vessel to a place according to the condition of the people and the need of what he wants to do and so if we deter from what he has instructed us to do then his will is hindered lives are at stake souls are at stake when we do not do what god calls us to do precisely oh i i, I thank god for this three-day revival because we are sharing a lot and i pray that uh you are taking it in and it is helping you in your walk now let's take a look at uh, it says this call can be known. The call can be known for which I am appointed a preacher and an apostle. And that is what Paul is saying over in First Timothy 2 and 7. So there's no reason to hide while you're there. I'm not talking about boasting. But if you have an assignment to go on for the Lord, by all means, let it be known. Um, the King James Version says, Wherein to I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. So he is establishing who he is. We must know who we are. When you go on an assignment, it two things are happening. You have identified and accepted your role in God's plans. And the other thing is that he has found you faithful and obedient to send you on an assignment. But you cannot go if you are having an identity crisis and you don't know who you are. You don't know what area of, of ministry he's called you to. Uh, you don't know who you are. So, if you don't know who you are in Christ, if we don't know who we are in Christ, how are we supposed to help those identify who they are in Christ? He said, be ye holy for I am holy. Yes, he did. But there is a mantle, there is a call upon your life. There is one of the ascension gifts or you uh, operate in one of the spiritual gifts. But you must know that going on this call. Going, when he calls you, let me read that definition. The word call comes from the Greek word kalis, a forensic meaning uh, or term to summon to court with the idea of giving an account. The word does not emphasize a call to service, but a call to accountability. And so if he called you to go on an assignment, it carries the weight of accountability. What is your mantle? What is a spiritual gift in which you are going? If you have been elevated to uh, the ministry uh, gift or office of uh, an apostle, what are you going to do? Look up and, and learn about what an apostle does. Now, one thing for sure is the writing of scripture has already been done. So that area of an apostle is not going to be repeated. All scripture has already been written. But establishing new ministries, teaching, schools, that that work. If it's in the, the of the prophet, know that the prophet walks with the apostle. The prophet is, is going to see uh, past, present, and future. They walk in order. Correction. If you are a teacher, what is it that you have to teach? It's an accountability not just oh i've been called to this and that's it you ain't doing nothing with it there is accountability when you are called 
All right. So here's the principle. The specific call of God can only be discovered and realized as one is cooperating with God to fulfill the general call of God. Let me read that again. The specific call of God can only be discovered and realized as one is cooperating with God cooperate with him that also takes us back to Romans 12 and 1 I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto him which is what our reasonable service that's right reasonable service and so cooperate with God in order to fulfill the general call of God it takes our cooperation he calls us to it but are we going to cooperate with it he can call you for an assignment but are you going to go on the assignment don't be like a Jonah Jonah decided that the people of Nineveh did not need God's grace and mercy And he didn't want to go and tell them to repent. He didn't want to. Because he just said they're just a wicked people and they don't deserve this opportunity. That decision is not up to us. We don't get to decide who has God's grace and mercy. We do not get to decide who has access to God's deliverance, healing, his love, salvation. We don't get to decide that. So even if we decide to muzzle our mouth and not go on in the on the assignment, guess what? He will raise up another willing vessel to go and do his will. The, the buck does not stop with us. He has a vessel who is willing to go. He's just inviting us to partake in what he has planned. But if we don't go, that doesn't mean that his will won't be done. His will shall be done on the earth. It shall be done. It shall be done. Now, let's look at these areas right here. God uses various ways and means to issue the call by an audible voice. And let's take a look at it. There are several scriptures, but we're not going to be able to cover all of them. All right, let's take a look at Joshua 1 and 1. This is a call that Joshua received. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, so he spoke to him. Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I give to them, even to the children of Israel. So Joshua received his call through audio voice. God spoke to him. Another individual that God spoke to through a audio voice, audio voice is... One of my favorite, favorite individuals, and that is Jeremiah. That's right. So Jeremiah 1 and 4 reads as follows. Then the Lord, then, then, then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. That's when he received his call. And, of course, you know, we mention Jonah. That's right. So these individuals received a audio, audible call from the Lord. Now, let's take a look at by vision. Okay? By vision, the prophet Isaiah received his call. I believe we shared this yesterday. And it's over in Isaiah 6. 
it says in the year that king uzziah died i saw also the lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up and his train filled the temple above it stood the seraphims each one has six wings with twan he covered his face and with twan he covered his feet and with twan he did fly and one cried unto another and said holy 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 is the lord of hosts the whole earth is full of his glory and the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried and the house was filled with smoke then said i woe is me for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. So through vision, Isaiah received his call. Paul received, remember Paul, on the way to Damascus? He was in a trance and he saw in a vision. Also, he heard the voice of the Lord calling him by a dream. Jacob, which is found over in Genesis 28. So as you can see, there are several areas in which we receive the call. Joseph received the call by a dream, by a, uh, 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 I want to say, you know, Isaac and Abram, they heard the voice of the Lord. They received the instructions to move and go. Moses, Gideon, and Zacharias experienced by a angelic visitation, uh, by prophecy and the laying on of hands, Paul and Timothy and by the inner conviction and witness of the Holy Spirit and so there are several ways in which one can receive the call by an audible voice by vision by dream um, by uh, telepathy um, by uh, angelic visitation and prophecy and laying on of hands and by the inner conviction and witness of the Holy Spirit and so in the instance of Abraham and Isaac they were drawn and and so let me read this um, also there will always be a confirmation of your call whenever you are called there is a confirmation whenever someone comes to you he he's already spoken to you so it should be a confirmation. If you're hearing something in your spirit, oh God, you know, you're supposed to go over here and speak. If you're hearing it for the first time and he has not spoken to you about it and put it in your spirit, I encourage you to go into prayer to seek the counsel of God to reaffirm these instructions. Don't move in uh, prematurely and once again, do not move according to the flesh. And listen, once again, there was always, always a confirmation of your call. Uh, the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit through the peace of God. Uh, leadership over me bears witness. The gifts and, and graces in my life bear witness. The people of God bear witness. The prophetic ministry and the laying on of hands bear witness. Circumstances open and closed doors confirm the call. Amen. So I pray, listen, these past three days have been absolutely phenomenal. And I am looking forward to our next. I don't know. I'm going to go into prayer and see what God is, is saying to us about our next session. This is actually also an extension from the College of Ministry and Mentoring programs that we offer. You can visit us on our website at www.angelfergusonministries.com. Uh, you can check out the courses that we offer, the length of time, the workbooks. And so this right here is a huge portion 
of what we teach concerning the fivefold ministry, being sent, hearing from God, knowing the voice of God. I pray that what we have shared with you has been food unto your soul and an enlightenment unto your path. And listen, I'm still praying for you. I'm praying that the gifts that have been bestowed upon you from our Heavenly Father are discovered. They are developed and cultivated so that they can manifest. I'm praying for you without ceasing. Know that we love you. Stay encouraged, encouraging others along the way. Once again, today is our Friday. If the Lord prolongs his uh, return and he allows us to, we will be back on Tuesday. That is our day of intercessory prayer. We will be back at 12 o'clock Tuesday for the kickoff of intercessory prayer. Know that I love you. Have a blessed day, everyone. Listen, put God first. Put him first in everything that you do.